אוקיי, okay, let's check out a very cool instrument uh, from Max for Live from the pack Creative Extensions called, let's go under instruments, called Bass. Let's load it up. Nice, let me open my keyboard. Okay. Nice, so this is Bass uh, from the Creative Extensions pack. It's a newer version of an older synth from the Max for Live Essentials. Uh, super dope stuff, very simple, but can be extremely fat thanks to the distortion and driving um, options that we have here. So we have a mixer style oscillator. Here we can just mix between two, uh, different waveforms to create a new one. And we also have a sub oscillator. Uh, the sub oscillator even have a subtone, which will add more distortion to the sub. Um, and we can create all sorts of waveforms here. Um, here is the mixer of the waveforms, and here is the tuning of the waveforms, which is also very cool. You can fine tune between them, create all sorts of unison and RIS type of uh, sounds, uh, and of course change the semitones as well uh, to create um, sorts of chords, but uh, with each uh, note is a different uh, waveform, which is very cool. Let's do like a major seventh. So that's the mixer section of the oscillator, really cool stuff. Right here we can add analog, which will add some detuning to the oscillators to kind of create a somewhat of an analog a simulated an a drift. Let's bring it up. So now we can hear the oscillators kind of moving, warbling, warbling in, uh, in pitch. Uh, we have the pulse width of both, let's go back to the mixer, above the square wave or the pulse. Let's open the filter and the triangle. Nice. Now uh, down here, we have uh, two kind of wave shaping effects. We have sync and we have ring. Uh, they're all based on like another internal oscillator for the sync is a square wave and for the ring is a sine wave. And with the percent, uh, basically how Ableton describes this is uh, the frequency, the pitch, but I'm not sure why it's percentage. I'm assuming 100 is tuned and 50 is gonna be tuned. And anything in between create a lot of in harmonics. And the amp envelope can also affect those uh, two wave shaping, uh, two effects. Uh, and here is how much the envelope. actually controls it. Nice. <clears throat> Here is the filter section. We can drive the filter, which is already gonna add a lot of beef and harmonics. Hope you got headphones for this, because it's pretty fat. Um, Cut off is of course the, just the filter resonance and filter envelope amount. Right here on the bottom, we have the envelope of the filter and how much we wanna apply it. Let's keep it. And here we have the filter types, just low pass, high pass, band pass, and notch. Low pass two is a very cool uh, distorted low pass. Nice. Okay, uh, here's the filter envelope. So let's do like a plug sound. Close the field. And you can even set it to be a times five. It's gonna duplicate by five the attack, decay, and release stages. Nice, so we can hear that filter closes. Here is the built-in LFO. Um, this kind of works weird because by default it's synced. First, you cannot re-trigger it when it's synced, that's weird. And it only works when Ableton is running. So now, right now, let's do like the pitch for the LFO, uh, LFO wobbling the pitch. Doesn't wobble. As soon as I hit spacebar to start Ableton. Oh, let's say I only had the sub going on. Here we go, now we can hear it. Let's stop Ableton. Doesn't wobble. With Ableton, 
what's going on? I had the sub up and that uh, is not modulated by the LFO pitch. Okay, nice. Uh, so we can uh, modulate LFO, uh, uh, the pulse width. Let's do free. Uh, the filter. <laughs> Volume, of course. But uh, nothing more than that. And I wish uh, there was also a way to do uh, on the other way, like the other, uh, like not bipolar, unipolar, so we can do minus. And a few other destinations would be nice. And also uh, uh, some uh, mod wheel would be great here. Okay, but we don't have those. Um, so here we can change the waveform. We even have some random. We can fade it in. Let's, for example, do like a vibrato. And let's do it on triangle. And we can also turn on the retrig, which will retrig the LFO from always the same place. Let's turn this down. But if the retrig is off, uh, it's always running in the background. So here's the tuning section. Uh, we have the semitones. If you change it by numbers, just putting it in, it actually change um, accordingly. But if you use your arrow keys, it actually goes in uh, steps, kind of a micro uh, tunnel. So that's super dope. Uh, octaves uh, by sense, and you can also apply velocity sensitivity. Uh, essentially, um, when you uh, have it on, it will listen to the velocity and change the volume and the filter, which is cool. This awesome master distortion. Let's add some sub. Really awesome stuff. The pitch band range by default is on five, which is weird. It should be two default, but you can go up to 24, two octaves. Here's the volume envelope. Uh, we have, uh, again, just like the filter envelope, you can duplicate the uh, attack decay sustain by five. And here we have portamento or glide. Basically, here what it means in this specific case in the bass. Uh, porta, you need the notes to overlap in order to glide. And glide, it's always gliding. They don't have to overlap. Nice. Now you do get a bunch of presets uh, with the bass right here. Uh, the different categories, really great stuff. I feel like this one is very, it's overlooked because it's so simple and it's hidden in the creative extensions pack. But uh, check it out, explore it, you can create some really nice fat sounds.